Hello, hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here by Exports for this Monday, September 21st, 2015. Probably the first time anyone seen me in a video wearing anything like colors. So he's, he wear black shirt, black colored shirts, you know, black t shirts. I got this new shirt today from the WWE shop that comes in a $10 shirt sale. How are you doing, my boys? And someone cast. Oh, I need to match it. I need my other accessory to make it complete. With both the cutscenes. There you go. Soft or perfect. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've had this for a while, so. It matches. Under the sports, before I get to wrestling. Football. Yes. Uh, some of the last leftovers from week one. The Monday Night Games will loop in. The, uh, the, you had the Eagles game in week one. Monday Night Football against, uh, Falcons. That was like the tail two halves. With the Falcons winning that one. And of course, Thursday, which began week two. Uh, Broncos against the Chiefs. And a very good game. And a very exciting ending. Almost very exciting and shocking ending since the Super Bowl. With, uh, the, the, the Chiefs were winning. Play interceptions and Broncos were not playing well. And then that last minute fumble from the Chiefs. Turned over by the Broncos to turn into a touchdown. So I thought it was like, what, what was it, like 26, 23? And I was like, there's no chance in hell Broncos are going to win this one. There's no chance in hell. Oh, yeah, 24, 20, 21, 24, something. We're at the score. And there's no way Broncos are going to win. Then, boom, they came back in the last minute and a half. That was crazy. Uh, then, Sunday. Uh, lots of bad news for NFC North teams, especially the Bears and the Lions. Uh, Bears, after their poor showing against the Packers, had another poor showing against the Cardinals. Yo, the sacrifice, Jack Cullen got injured again. Hamstring injury, two weeks. I just got that notification that he's out for at least two weeks from a hamstring injury. A lot of injuries, not just Cullen, but other teams I get to them. And Detroit Lions, eh, eh, eh. oh god, they, they played horrid against the Vikings. Horrid, horrid, horrid. Go Broncos! Anyway, <laughs> that's what I'm doing on Sunday. Fuck the Lions. They're 0-2. They have no chance in hell making the playoffs. At least the Seahawks, who are also 0-2, they have a chance. Because they're going to destroy the Lions. You know what I mean? Lions have a tough schedule. You got Broncos and the Seahawks. And then the Cardinals. So they're going to get killed. Maybe I say either 0-16 or 5-11. That's my prediction for the Lions season. They suck. Anyway. um, Other big games. Uh, Steelers won their first game of the season being the 49ers 43-18. Uh... Redskins won against the Rams, the same team that beat the Seahawks. But the Seahawks lost to the Packers last night, losing 27-17. But the Packers made a comeback after Seahawks had the lead. Kind of like the opposite of the last game. Packers had the lead, then Seahawks came back. And this time it was in Lambeau, not in Seattle, like the NFC Championship game. So big revenge game for the Packers. Meanwhile, the injuries continue to pile on for the Cowboys. Following losing Des Bryant to a foot injury, Tony Romo got injured during the game yesterday against the Eagles in Philly. Suffering a... I think it was a hamstring injury as well. He's out for at least a couple weeks. He could be out for the season, I'm hearing. So, with Des Bryant out and Romo out, it's going to be a tough one. If once again they won, it's going to win. They win both their games, but they lose people to sacrifice the wins. Uh, Patriots won against the Bills, even though Belichick wasn't impressed with Brady's performance, despite winning against the Bills 40-32. Falcons won. They're 2-0 against Indiana NFL to beat the Giants. Tonight we have the Jets against Indy, a 1-0 team against an 0-1 team. Would the Colts be 0-2? Should see tonight at Monday Night Football. 
Now, unzoom sporting when it comes to fighting. Uh, before I get to wrestling, MMA and kickboxing collided as Bellator and Glory put on a co headline event called Dynamite. It was decent for the most part, some good action. Uh, you had, of course, the Light Heavyweight Tournament, a four man tournament to determine the next number one contender for the Light Heavyweight Championship for the Bellator title. King Mo took a Linton Vassal in the uh, first semi final. Uh, good striking, good, okay action. King Mo, he was more hesitant. You know, he was trying to save a lot of energy. He had Vassal down, but he didn't go at him. Then he finally nailed him and did go on him. And then submitted him in the second round. Actually, he didn't submit him. It was a unanimous decision. The tournament rounds were two rounds. So, you know King Mo won the first fight. Unfortunately, he got hurt during the fight and wasn't able to make the final. He was replaced by Francis Camo to take on the winner of the second semifinal match between Phil Davis and Emmanuel Newton. There's quite many trying to get back in the game, especially to try to go for another shot against the guy who took the title from him, Liam McGarry, trying to get another shot at him, especially after the interesting, weird finish at the match with Liam won. I thought Newton won the fight. I like Liam, but I think Newton won the fight. Uh, Phil, Phil Joe Davis was added with a big punch in the course of takedown and submitted Emmanuel Newton in the first round. And Phil Davis would eventually win the finals against the replacement of King Mo for this combo with a killer knockout, killer knockout from Phil Davis. And then you had the pride. The pride fights. You had uh, Kerry Ann Taylor Melendez against Haley Griffith. First ever women's bannerweight fight in a, belt, in a glory wing. It was kind of cool that set up you had a cage next to the ring. That was cool. Uh, I've never seen kickboxing before. So it was kind of a new experience for me. So that's why I think this was unique. The kickboxing fans can see MMA for the first time. They probably stay away from it. Especially UFC. And MMA fans can see kickboxing. It was entertaining. You know, if Carrie Ann looking more aggressive with the visits, kicks, and stuff, got some knockdowns, but not much as she won the fight by unanimous decision. Then Semtex Paul Daly took on Fernando Gonzalez. It wasn't as explosive as he thought, but still a very entertaining fight with Paul Daly in the victory because he looked more aggressive, I think. And I think the judges saw that way too. Another kick, uh, Bellator fight. You had uh, Josh Thompson taking on Mike Bonzulis. It was okay. I fell asleep during that fight. <laughs> It was a long day for me yesterday, you know, I watched the Western Pay Per View, and I had, a, I had a, like four gigs this weekend, so I was already tired out from all the stuff that's been going on. It just up that his UFC debut looked okay. He got a submission in the third round. It was decent action, nothing was excitement. Then of course, the main title fights for both Bellator and Glory. The light heavyweight title of Glory was on the line vacancy, as Solo Cavoy took it on Zach Bikressa. Bikressa. Need to pronounce his name right. Uh, it was a uh, decent fight for what it was for a championship. The both guys were both aggressive. There was a lot of. I love Glory because whenever they got in the man hug, they broke it up. Yay! Because I hate man hugs. They should do that in MMA. Have more leniency towards man hugs. Man hug? Break it up. They call it holding. I call it man hug. Because they stole the fight by doing that. So, easy fight for the title with Solo winning the match. He was looking more aggressive. Then the main event for Bellator, for their light heavyweight championship, Lee McGarry's first defense against the Huntington Beach Bear Boy, Tito Ortiz. Despite the crowd being very pro Tito, cheering him, Lee McGarry tried to show up in some Michigan game again. He's, a, he's been known as a knockout guy, but for the last couple of fights, He's been working on his submissions. You know, he won the tournament final like that. And he tried to do it against Newton. And he was going for a submission game again. Taking down Tito. And eventually got a surprise submission. As Tito didn't look good after trying to get out of submission. Attempts. He tried to power out of it. But one mental mistake put him in a position for a submission. And he put a triangle choke. And he got to tap out to Liam McGeary in the very first round. And there's a UFC fight on, uh, not, uh, UFC, 
Bellator fight on Friday. Hopefully, it's a whole lot better. This this goes decent. The Bellator cards have not been exciting as they once were, but with the Bellator version of the baddest man on the planet, Joe Ward fighting, should be a very exciting fight. As he'll take on L.C. Davis for a possible number contender fight in the bantamweight division. Also, Kendall Gold fight against Joey Beltran. So it should be a decent card this Friday for Bellator following the Dynamite card this past Saturday night. Now on to the WWE Raw preview for tonight. The aftermath of Night of Champions. Alright. Four questions that must be answered tonight. Question number four. Were any matches being announced for Hell in a Cell? Now, as I mentioned in my review last night of NLC, and of course during that pay-per-view, the rubber match between The Undertaker and Brock Lesnar will take place inside Hell in a Cell on October 25th during that pay-per-view. Now, I can see now that why the SummerSlam ending was so controversial as it was to set up the third match, but it just wasn't the right way. It wasn't executed right to set up the third match. I didn't like the ending of SummerSlam. And it was a better fight than Mania. And I'm going to look forward to the Hell in a Cell match. But I didn't thought of this till today. I was like, after seeing Sting go down last night to an injury, I heard that. I'll get more about it later in one of my other questions. Uh, Tenko passed out at SummerSlam after the match. So, because these guys over 50 taking some big bumps. I said in my review, I applauded Sting for taking those big bumps. But it took a lot out of him. Same with Tango taking those big bumps against Lesnar. And now they're fighting in Hell in a Cell again for the first time since No Mercy of 2002, which they'll probably won't let you know that. Knowing WWE, they don't want to bring up past history because they don't want to make the other guys look good without mentioning old wins. That's what happened with Triple H and Taker. They didn't mention WrestleMania 17 when they fought at WrestleMania 27. They didn't want to say, oh, Triple H lost to Taker before. So... Not like they had a cell match at Mania 28. Anyway, um. So it's interesting if these guys help fight Hell in a Cell. Any other matches announced? As they possibly Wallace and Kane. Get to them in a second as well. So if I get some matches, maybe Hell in a Cell, maybe in a few weeks. I don't think tonight. Because tonight's all about to fall off of NLC. Question number three. What's going to happen with the three new champions? John Cena is once again the United States champion. Bringing Seth Rollins in a fun match last night at Nano Champions. One of the only few highlights that were actually outstanding. That's what That was what I was looking for. There was no outstanding match last night at the pay-per-view. It was an okay card. Algae's acting up. I apologize. And a lot better than some of the there was no screwy ending. That's why I applauded Wallace matches. No screwy endings. No interference. No bullshit till after the second match. I'm actually glad Cena's the champ again. Because he he does he's done better the U.S. championship than anything. It brings prestige to it. Like the new IC champion, Kevin Owens, finally made a mid-card title. If he can't be U.S. champion, he's IC. He'll bring more prestige to it than Ryback did. It's going to say Ryback didn't have enough time to really... Do a good job as IC champion, but I think Owens will do a better job. He's back on the wise again after a tough, couple tough losses against Cena. So there you go. And of course, full wheel this time. No cop out finish last night during the Divas title match. Charlotte won full wheel despite a leg injury, which we don't know if it was legit or not. After she landed badly during a spot against Nikki, she did win the Divas championship. Four wheel. And it needs a match against Nikki. She did the best against She can't match even on one leg. That was the story of the fight. And the story of the Kevin Owens fight. With both Nikki and Owens focusing on body parts. Owens focusing on Ryback's arm. And Nikki focusing on the leg of Charlotte. Ryback lost. Nikki lost. You know, Owens won. So there you go. See what's up with those new champs tonight. During the first night as champs on wall. And also a little side question about the Team 3D Dudley Boys. I need to call them Dudley Boys now because there's Dudley Boys again. 
against the New Day. New Day, they lost, but they got themselves disqualified. So, the we rematch, we match tonight, I'm smelling. Or oh, hell so. Question number two, what's next for Sting? Well, I said this, and I said, I was thinking about myself, I was like, it doesn't matter who wins, it's going to be a bad scenario. He's like, oh, Sting won, he's going to be a part-time champion, and Rollins lost. Oh, well, it's one. And I mean, Sting lost two straight pay-per-view matches in a row. You know, I said in my review last night, Sting didn't want to go to WWE for the longest time because they buried people from WCW. And he finally came and now he's treated like that. You know, the reason why he didn't want to go to begin with. And guess what? He got injured out of the fight. Because uh, there was a spot where he was rammed against the barricade, uh, not barricade, the turnbuckle. Doing a power bomb onto the oop to the bear to the buckle and it was doctor that came in they could eat the fight and that's why there was a sudden finish when Wallace rolled up sting after the uh school be a death block attempt. It was kind of a weird sudden finish. Maybe it's because of that injury. I mean it's career threatening right now. Uh there's no I don't think they didn't say like like they didn't clarify the extent whether it was like injured ribs or but I'm saying it's significant, possibly career threatening. May get more details later. But uh we hope to wish Sting a speedy recovery and may take some time off of WWE and get rebooked again and win a pay per view match. Unless he wants to retire, we'll see. Uh a little side question before we get to uh, question number one. Uh What's next for Impulse and Reigns? Uh, they teamed up against the Wyatts with Jericho. Kind of a surprise. Kind of a kind of a kind of a, a silent wah wah. Should have been Joe. Unless he wasn't Corbin or Warren. But Jericho's kind of an odd way. I said last night Jericho was a random, but it was still kind of cool to see him there. And he kind of turned heel by blind tagging himself in, and he lost the match for the team. It's kind of cool. That he got Wyatts over because. Ambrose and Reigns won't get him over. Reigns about to get Jericho in. Let him get the pin. So we'll see if they get a third partner or not. A new third partner. And of course, question number one. We'll go down to that between Seth Rollins and the newly returned Demon Kane. After Rollins' victory against Sting, Sheamus tried to cash him in the bank. He never did, thank God. And I said this. If Sheamus cashes in, I hope he fails to win, like Cena in Sen now. I won't be the third guy to unsuccessfully win a title from cashing in at my TV. Kane came out, no longer corporate Kane, he's Demon Kane. Chokeslam Wallens and Chokeslam Sheamus, preventing him from cashing in. So we're possibly looking at a Wallens Kane match at Hell in a Cell for the WWE title. And Kane's been going through a lot of changes, you know, he's like Big Show, needs to retire. But his corporate character was okay, but it's not as good as he once was wrestling-wise, but I think this would bring back new vigor in him, being the monster again. It makes sense on a storyline. Thought. Because of the fact that Kane was corporate Kane, and he was kissing ass to Wallens, but he didn't like Wallens. He was going back and forth, but I love him or I hate him. You know, he kept changing his mind about while it's like a girl changes his clothes. So I put that Katy Perry reference. That's the only thing I can think of to compare Kane's changing his mind all the time about Wallens. But I think he's going to say it took me fighting a demon again after being taken out by Brock Lesnar before Battleground to find a demon again to really embellish the hate. To embrace the hate. I remember that whole storyline of Cena. Embrace the hate. It brings the hate for Seth Rollins. I expect like some sort of confrontation between those two tonight. Seth will be all smiles because he injured Sting. But those smiles will turn upside down when Kane shows up. Find out this and more on War Tonight at 8 7 Central on USA Network. That is it for the Tax Sports for today. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned later on to this channel for my more review. With that in mind, you've been attacked by the news. From Zach. See you later. Sports news from Zach. See ya. Yeah.